Tonight's theme is Shakespeare in love. And it's pretty cool, too, because most, uh, most, uh, most of the time, plays are made into movies. And in this one, uh, Shakespeare in Love was a movie uh, put in 1998 and was made a play, made into a play in 2014. Um, and uh, I've got... I'm not going to do the whole synopsis for you. There's just too many things happening in it. But uh, suffice it to say that uh, it takes place in, in London. And Will Shakespeare is trying to write a comedy called Romeo and, um, Romeo and Ethel, the Pirate's Daughter. And, uh, and, he's, and he's got, uh, he's got a writer's block. He's not doing very well. And that's not helped by the fact that the owner of the theater is really putting a lot of pressure on him. And, uh, uh, and then there's this... Um, there's this young woman, a noble woman, really, named Viola, and she loves the theater, and she's in love with, she's just infatuated with Will Shakespeare and his writing, and, and she wants to be an actress, but, um, but it's forbidden for women to tread the boards in those days. Everything working all right? Uh, so, uh, so she disguises herself as, as a man and uh, calls herself... Um, What'd she call herself? Um, I can't remember what she calls herself. I wrote it down here someplace. Uh, huh? No, no. Yeah, yeah, it should be Cesario, right? Because it's, uh, no, it's Kent. Uh, somebody Kent. Uh, she, 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 she calls herself uh, by a man's name. She goes, she auditions for the play and Shakespeare sees her and thinks she's wonderful. She's a wonderful man playing this part and he wants to, but she runs away afterwards and he follows her and goes to her mansion and there's a big party going on that's uh, for her, uh, the betrothal of her to some man she doesn't really know or like or anything like that. But when Will gets there, he sees her he doesn't know it's the guy who auditioned for the show. He sees her, and they have a scene like Romeo and Juliet, you know, across the, across the ball, and they fall in love with each other, and uh, things go on. You know, it, 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 she gets the part, and, and, and uh, they end up doing the play. He ends up, his writer box goes away, and he ends up writing Romeo and Juliet, and they end up performing it together. There's, uh, he gets some help from uh, Christopher Marlowe on the way, uh, and Christopher Marlowe, even after Marlowe's death, maybe caused by Will Shakespeare, uh, Christopher Marlowe uh, even comes back as a ghost to collaborate with him some more. So uh, uh, that's, that's, pretty much, uh, that's pretty much the play. Um, I did... Um, Except it also has a pretty good, uh, you get a pretty good idea of what, it, what theater business was like, I think, uh, probably back in Elizabethan times. And speaking of Elizabeth, Judy Dench won uh, an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for, for the, playing the Queen, and uh, my wife got to do it in Play That Queen in, uh, in New York a few years back. And uh, uh, Kevin, right, and Kevin Keg. And Kevin Craig West, who's in New York and with us tonight, he played Christopher Marlowe. You'll find out about that later. But, um, but, I, but I, I, I want to tell you about my connection to Romeo and Juliet. Can I, can I tell you about my... my yes, Okay, thank you. Because I got to play Romeo in, my, in, in junior high school. And I know, you laugh, laugh. <laughs> But it was really, I mean, we made, we did, we did wonderful productions at that, at, in, in junior high school, phenomenal productions, um, ex except for my Juliet was kind of insipid and, and French kissed me when we were in rehearsal and I had never been French kissed before and I, it kind of grossed me out. And, uh, and the guy who played Tibble was a terrible actor who couldn't do a death scene. Every time I ran him through in rehearsal, he'd kind of squeak. And I kept trying to get him to do better at that. And, and he couldn't, except for on the night of the performance. And it was only one night. We did the whole thing, costumes, everything. One night, on the night of the performance, uh, he made such a horrendous sound. Nobody had ever heard this from him before. Everybody thought he had actually died on stage. 
But the worst thing that happened was that during lunch that day, the day of uh, of the performance it was going to be at night, uh, me and some of the stage crew were playing with the swords, fencing, and uh, the tip of his sword broke off, and he got me in the arm, and it had to have stitches. And, uh, you know, I, I told my drama teacher that I'd done that climbing over a fence, and he said, you are playing with the swords, weren't you? And he was so hurt that I would jeopardize the play that he, uh, when he put my makeup on that night, because he put my makeup on, he just looked straight through me, and I felt so bad that in that scene with Fire Lawrence, when he tells me that I'm... Uh, that I'm been banished, I cried so hard. It's probably the best acting I've ever done in my life. And then, and then, uh, but but I didn't, but I didn't do theater uh, in high school because it wasn't as good a program. I played football instead. Went to UCLA on a football scholarship and got a fraternity and forgot all about forgot all about doing. Theater, uh, except for one, I did one performance, not in the not in the uh, theater department, but it was of All's Well That Ends Well. I played played parolas, and and all things. So that was the one role I played in all of uh, college. And then you know, then I graduated and I became a, uh, uh, a probation officer. I moved to New York and was a social worker, and ultimately a brick mason, brick and stone mason. And then I broke my back, and I couldn't do brick and stone masonry anymore. And I was back in Los Angeles. I'm 27 years old, and I called a friend up and said, because I'd always my, that teacher used to take us that that drama teacher from Madrid, used to take us down to San Diego to see the plays at the Globe Theater every summer. And and I and I'd, and I'd fantasize about being on that stage. And so I called us this friend. I'm 27 years old. I call up my friend and say, as an actor, and she said, I said, do you know when the Globe is auditioning? And she said, yeah, they're auditioning today in Los Angeles. It's their last day they're here. And I said, so I went down there and I waited five hours to get in because, you know, I wasn't on the list. And, I, and with two uh, speeches that I remembered, kind of, uh, because I didn't have any books with me, and I had uh, Oh, That This Two Two Solid Flesh, Hamlet, and, uh, and Parola's virginity speech, except I couldn't really remember Parola's virginity speech. I couldn't remember all of it. I could remember most of it. I could remember the end. So I go in, I finally go in, and uh, there's the, you know, artistic director, and, uh, and there's uh, Diana Maddox, who is going to be directing Romeo and Juliet, and, and she used to be the uh, dramaturge for the Royal Shakespeare Company, and, you know, these are people, and, and I say, I tell them what I've got, and they say, oh, we hear Hamlet all the time, do the parola speech, right? <laughs> and I oh, shit, well, maybe if I say it real fast, it'll, it'll come to me, you know, wrote right at the end, it'll just come to me, and, and so I do, I just launch into this motherfucker, and I and you just, just, just tear into it, and I go as fast as I can. I get to the end, and I go, and, and, and they say, you know, they laugh, and they say, thank you very much. And, I, and I'm walking towards the door, and uh, they said, Carl? And I turn around, and I said, uh, can you fence? Oh, yeah, yeah, fence, right. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm walking towards the door. Carl? Yeah. Uh, are you uh, available the dates of such and such and such? Oh, yeah, yeah, available, right, yeah. Thank you very much. I've got my hand on the doorknob. Diana Maddox says, Carl, it's really nice to hear somebody move Shakespeare like that. <laughs> and uh, I got the job, moved down to San Diego, and worked at the, worked at the Globe for three years down there. So that's my story. But, uh, but we... <laughs>